likes B-Series Hondas. Well, if you're like me, you like Turbo B-Series even better. This video is actually a follow-up to my original B16A Big Bang video. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's right here. And while I was trying to find out how much power a stock B16A would take, what I found out actually was how much boost in power I could run on a stock B16A that didn't have enough ring gap. You see, that's what happened in that first test. I made over 400 horsepower, but ended up breaking the ring lands on several of the pistons. And the reason for that is because I didn't take it apart beforehand and increase the ring gap. So the rings butt together, they break the ring lands on the pistons and then I have a smoky motor. After taking that apart though, I was able to put it back together. All I needed to do was replace the factory pistons with forged pistons and that required me to put forged rods in it. I'm going to go over all of that stuff in the results, but we were able to put this motor back together, get it up on the dyno, change the turbo and run even more boost. So let's check it out. As I indicated previously, this buildup on the turbocharged B16A came as the aftermath of <laughs> me damaging the first one. We ran that one all stock, and, and by stock I meaning I never changed the ring gap, which turned out to be the problem. But that motor was all stock. It was basically untouched. It had the factory head, head bolts, head gaskets, stock pistons, stock ring gap, all that stuff. We turned it up. We made over 400 horsepower before, as we thought would happen, <laughs> as we now know will happen, uh, we broke the ring lands on the pistons because we had we didn't have enough uh, we didn't have enough ring gap. So what I did was after we took that apart and we found that the pistons were broken. I mean, the motor was still running, just had some blow by, but it was still running and still in good shape. So I decided I'm going to take that motor and I'm going to make a minimum of modifications for this one. I'm going to put it back on because we had a good setup with the intercooler. We had more than enough turbo, although we also stepped up in turbo because since we were going to step up in power, I wanted to do that. But we also stepped up in camshaft. So I wanted to make sure that this motor would obviously make more power than we had before, before we ended up breaking it. And I also want to make sure that it would not break. So we made a number of modifications to it. First off, we retained the factory block. I didn't sleeve it. Um, we didn't put a deck guard on it. We didn't do any of that stuff. The block was just the way that it came from the factory. We also retained the factory crankshaft, which is more than strong enough. But I was going to replace the factory pistons, obviously, since they broke in the first episode. So we knew we would have to replace those factory pistons. So I was going to put forged pistons in it so we could turn the boost up. I was also obviously going to address the ring gap situation. So we did that. But in having to do that and having to put the pistons on, it was just easier for me also to install forged connecting rods. I mean, I put a set of um, 5290 forged connecting rods. And the, all of these things came from the guys at Probe Racing back in the day. We put a set of Probe flat top pistons with valve release, which lowered... <coughs> which lowered the static compression, but you know, what are you gonna do? Lowering the static compression definitely hurts power, but it probably will ultimately help us run more boost and, and more power. So we'll see what happens. So we ended up running the flat top pistons and the forge rods with the factory crank and the factory block. Obviously we put more ring gap in it. We went out to, I usually choose between six and a half and seven thousandths per one inch of bore. So you can calculate that out. And that kind of works for, Hondas or Mitsubishis or LSs or small block Fords, big blocks, whatever. If you calculate that out, you just want to give yourself enough ring gap when you're putting boost to this thing. And here's a common question, guys. Well, how much ring gap do I need, you know, for this amount of boost? It's actually not just boost. It's a lot of things. It's actually just ring temperature. The more temperature you put in the rings, the more they grow, the more ring gap you need. So if you run seven pounds, it probably isn't going to get hurt. But if you run seven pounds for a half an hour, you're going to put a lot more temperature in that ring and there's more chance of it getting hurt. So it's not just it's not just boost. It's a lot of different things to determine how much ring gap you need. So again, back to our modified motor. We took our B16A and redid the bottom end with forged rods and forged pistons. I just re we just replaced the head gasket. I even re-ran the <laughs> reused the stock head bolts. I know everyone tells you, ah, you can't do that, but we did. We used the stock head. I didn't do any upgrades to the head. I didn't do any upgrades to the P30 uh, B16A um, intake manifold or throttle body. We ran those again. And what I did was put this motor on the dyno and ran it NA before we added boost because I like to do that. I like to make sure that the motor is doing what it's supposed to before we add boost. That way, if there's a problem, we want to make sure that it's not just boost related. If something's wrong with the cam timing or the motor's not sealing, we give it a chance to break in and work real well, run NA, doing what it's supposed to do. 
then we add boost. So what we did was we ran this combination NA with a, a Apex long tube header and just a RS Akimoto, you know, tube on a stick kind of radius entry air, air cleaner. We ran it all with a fast XFI management system and the curve is a little jaggedy. I wasn't um, doing the tuning back then and I, I'm not blaming anybody else for the tuning. I'm actually not sure what's going on, why, why this is like this, but Anyway, this thing ended up making about 185 horsepower at the flywheel, and peak torque checked in at 127 foot-pounds. So now let's see what happened when we started adding boost. Before we started adding boost, I forgot to mention, <laughs> this is a very important part, uh, we also upgraded the camshaft and springs on the factory head. And we didn't change anything on the head, but we did put new cams in it and obviously springs to go with that. We installed a set of crane stage one cams which, which were basically just a little bit of a step above a type r cam it was a 457 425 lift split and a 242 230 degree duration split so they were obviously quite a bit better than a factory um you know p30b16a set of cams and and a little bit better even than a type r cam so that's partly why this thing made uh, the power that it did even though it had less compression than the factory but what we did then was add a single turbo setup obviously and we ran it had a uh dedicated tubular turbo exhaust manifold unlike the last time when we ran the B16A destruction test where I ran the apex header, the long tube header. We replaced that with a kind of a more conventional turbo exhaust manifold. And we also stepped up in turbo size. On the last test, we ran a 53 millimeter turbo, which is basically just a leftover turbo from a twin turbo setup that I had for a 4.6 liter modular Ford. And it wasn't designed obviously for a for a B16A, but it worked well and made lots of power. But we wanted to step things up. We knew we were going to make more power. So I put on a uh, GT66 turbo from Innovative, and it was capable of flowing enough to you know push the power output fairly high on this thing because we were going to run the boost up. So it worked well, and we retained the Spearco air to water intercooler and ran Dyna water through that. Although again, it, like we like we did before, it would definitely make more power if we ran ice water through it. The combinations respond very well to ice water, and as an ultimate thing, that's probably what I would do, and that's what we ended up doing when we ran the turbo two liter deal that I made for Bonneville. But on this um, on this turbo combination, grab all my turbo turbo places here. So this is our first setup at uh, 9.2 pounds with our single turbo setup. This thing made over 300 horsepower, 310 or so, and peak torque checked in at 203 foot pounds of torque and you can see we started the runs a little bit higher it was just easier um, the way that the dyno loads on this very small but fairly now high output motor um, with the na motor it was hard the dyno struggled a little bit to work with that small of a motor um, but here's what happened when we you know and we weren't obviously done at only nine pounds <laughs> we were just getting started so here's what happened when we increased the boost up to 11 pounds or up to 14 pounds and as you can see like we have seen many times before as you go up and boost as long as you have the air fuel right and the timing right you know it just basically kind of makes more power everywhere uh, we had a little bit less timing and it was a little bit richer um, up at the top here on on the 14 pound run but we didn't spend a lot of time tuning each one of the levels because we know we were going up and up and up but this made 381 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 262 foot pounds so now let's go up again and boost so we went up to 18 pounds this made 425 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 286 foot pounds. Next step up was almost to 20 pounds. It was 19.9 pounds. Peak power was 453 horsepower. Peak torque was 303 foot pounds of torque, so we were over 300 foot pounds. So then we obviously stepped it up some more to a peak of 22.4 pounds.
Again, even more power. 485 horsepower. 324 foot-pounds of torque. And our final run of the today, because we, uh, we were starting to run out of available dyno time. Final run of today was over 500 horsepower, 507 horsepower, and 339 foot-pounds of torque. So as you can see, the turbo combination kept going and going and going. Again, this was a stock block. It was not sleeved. It was not... <laughs> we didn't have any deck insert or anything in it. And the thing worked well. I ran this motor a lot, and... It made lots and lots of power. We actually ended up taking this block later on and taking it apart and doing a little bit more of a concerted effort into it. We changed the cams. We did eventually sleeve this thing. We ran ice water and we were, we were able to make a lot more power. But for this combination on a, on a you know stock block, stock head bolt, stock P30 uh, intake manifold, stock head, other than the cams and springs, this is a pretty good combination. Let's get to our let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what'd you think about the test on our turbocharged B16A post Big Bang test? I'll tell you what; these Honda motors really impressed me. I mean, they just love boost, and you almost can't put the wrong camshaft in it, even though I'm famous for using the wrong cam. But on a B16 motor, it makes lots of power. All you have to do is add boost, and in this combination, we obviously lowered the compression. We put different cams in it, but the thing that impressed me the most is the fact that I reused the stock head bolts. It had a factory head, it wasn't ported, it had a factory intake. It basically just had a good turbo and decent sized camshafts in it, and then all we did was turn the boost up. There's a lot more power to be had from this combination if I run ice water, run an even bigger turbo. I mean, there's lots of stuff that I can do to make even more power, but I was pretty impressed it made over 500 horsepower. Let me know in the comments, guys. I want to know your combinations. How much power have you guys made from B16s? This was way back in the day, and I know guys are making a lot more power now, so let me know in the comments. I'm Richard Holdner. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I'll keep on testing.